These are laser beams, often thought of in the context of Star Wars and 21st century weapons of destruction. But laser beams can do a lot more than destroy things. They can also read and write information, lots of information, hundreds of megabytes of data all on one CD-ROM. These little laser disks, CD-ROMs, are revolutionizing computer software. Today, we'll take a look at the newest in CD-ROM software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that frothy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is Michael Nadeau, senior editor with Byte Magazine and author of the Byte Guide to CD-ROMs. Mike, we all want to play these wonderful CD-ROM games and buy these CD-ROM titles, but sometimes we find our drive isn't fast enough, we don't have enough free memory to support the intensive demands of these CD-ROM titles. You've got a couple utilities to show us that solve those problems? Right. The first utility I have is the MPC Wizard from Eris Entertainment. Among other things, what this utility will do is tell you if your CD-ROM drive meets the MPC requirements. And uh, you have a choice of either doing a seek time test Average seek time. or a data transfer rate. And let's do the data transfer. And what we're doing here is reading data from the disk and measuring how fast it, it is transferred. So it might be a good idea to buy this little utility first. It's only about 15 bucks, right? right. Take it to the store with you to test the drive before you buy it. Exactly. And the results tell us what? that uh, this drive is MPC2 compatible at 300 kilobytes per second. So this one would be good enough. Right. Okay, now what about the, the free memory problems when you try to load one of these CD-ROM titles? Well, Windows requires the user to know quite a bit more about uh, the system than, than most users should have to know. Okay. And uh, what uh, WinSleuth Gold Plus from Dariana Software does is, is help uh, people optimize their auto-exec and config sys files. Okay, which is usually where the problem is, right? Yes. Uh, what we have here is the auto exec file, and I'll click on tune up, and it tells me to load my mouse driver into high memory. So WinSleuth will sort of automatically analyze your config sys, your auto exec, and, and make suggestions as to how to solve the problems. Right. All right, terrific. All right, one way to find out what's new in CD ROMs and multimedia is to visit the Intermedia Show. It's the big annual conference on CD ROM technology. The 1994 show was held recently at the San Jose Convention Center, and we were there. 300 exhibitors showed off the latest CD-ROM products at this Intermedia. One of the hottest categories is educational software geared for use by children on computers at home. Dorling Kindersley Multimedia previewed two new electronic books, The Way Things Work and My First Incredible Amazing Dictionary. An airport is a place where airplanes take off and land. I think one of the problems with the existing software often is that it's too technical, it's made by technical people, people don't feel comfortable. A lot of it has very little charm, and I think you can see in the computer software that we've produced, the charm is still there, the sort of thing you'd expect of a book, but of course, a great deal extra in terms of animation and sound and things you simply can't do with a book. Animation, sound, and video are included in the new CD-ROM version of the popular game SimCity. I've enough power lines and power plants to service your fine city. <laughs> Splendid job, man. Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia comes bundled with a Sigma MPEG video compression card for impressive 30 frames per second video display. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. World Library's Library of the Future CD-ROM has over 1,750 full-text literary titles, along with animation, photos, and video. NEC debuted the first quadruple-speed CD-ROM player, the Multispin 4X Pro, which offers 180 millisecond access speed. That speed carries a price tag of $995. That's a look at Intermedia 94, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
There seems to be no end to what you can do with all that capacity on a CD-ROM. We have three examples set up now to show you. Here to help us are Rosemary West of the Association of Shareware Professionals. Over there, Craig Bartholomew of Microsoft. And also with us, Manu Sabori of Eden Interactive. Let's start with you, Rosemary. And I guess from a shareware author's point of view, CD-ROM is a great medium for distributing your, your work, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. You can get the many different kinds of programs from many different authors and publishers out to the users who need to see them. Okay, we're going to take a look at one CD here. And how many titles are on this one disc? I think we have about 500 at this time. And of course, it's updated quarterly with well, new uh, that's programs. Great. All right, can you show us what the interface looks like and how you would get to all those hundreds of titles? Sure. On the main screen in the lower left-hand corner, you have a menu. Uh, you can choose to select among the program categories. If you've already done that and tagged a few programs, you could install or further review them at this time. All right, suppose I want to look at the program categories and see what my choices are on this. Sure, we'll pick do? that. You have some informational files, and as you can see, I'm scrolling down through all these great so categories. Category, different education titles, games. A lot of applications, technical things. Okay, now suppose I want to go down a layer and actually drill down and see detail on one of the titles. Sure. Let's go into the games, take a look at that. You can see the file name, the title of the program, some information about it, even who wrote it. Mm -hmm. And what the terms are, if you want to actually register it, what you should pay for it. That's so right. All right, so how would I launch one of these programs? I'd actually want to get to play the blackjack game, let's say. <laughs> okay, we've got Ultimate Blackjack okay. here. And if we want to go out and take a look at that, we can run it directly from the CD. Uh -huh. uh, and as you can see, oh, it's, nice a, looking. Yeah, it's a cute program. You can pick how many other people are going to play, get that dealer up there, and uh, it's just <laughs> like the real thing. <laughs> All right, terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at what Craig has now. And you have Encarta, which is one of the CD-ROM encyclopedias that are out there. There are quite a few of them. As you know, what, what kind of distinguishes Encarta, would you say, Craig? Uh, there are several things, but one thing in particular is that we've, we are somewhat freed of the, the, the print burden of, of having to stick to a certain pagination, and, and uh -huh. we've found a way of putting much, much more in a CD than normally. You mentioned earlier that 680 megabytes is a lot, and well, we, we find it to be very, very, so very you, you consider that a limitation? Oh, right a big limitation. And we've found so you've managed to compress and squeeze even mm -hmm. more on that disk? We found a way to, to uh, squeeze on eight hours of sound. And wow. and considering that a normal audio CD has an hour and 10 minutes of sound, it's quite a eight bit. Eight hours of sound plus the encyclopedia. Plus, plus nine million words yeah. and 7,000 photos. Uh, All right, show us how it works. Let's go into the, the Jamaica right, so using article. the sort of volume and the encyclopedia metaphor up we there. We think it's something that people are very comfortable with. Sure, we'll pull out the J book. And I can just type in uh, Jamaica, uh -huh. and up comes Jamaica. I just click once, and I go to the article on Jamaica. Um, when I come to the article here, I have the text over here. There's, there's 9 million words of text in Encarta. Um, there's a category area, and there's a graphics area here. So that screen is hot. I can click on those, those graphics. I can click on the words. Mm -hmm. I can click on, I see you have sound files and so on. All the words here are hot. We'll take you to other articles. Uh -huh. um, we can scroll down the, uh, the, the text. And as the text scrolls, the pictures will change here. So everything's linked together. And if we move across here um, a bit further, we'll come down here to, the, to uh, an audio clip by Bob Marley. Uh -huh. Let's bring that up and play it. Um, there are quite a number of audio clips here, and they all range in about the 25 to 30 second range. And we can take this and listen to it all the way through, or we can stop it and copy it. Okay, and so we you can, can actually copy and paste the, the sound files, I take it the text, the graphics. Mm -hmm. And we can take the sound files into a word processor. For instance, if I'm a student doing a uh, school report mm -hmm. and just bring up my word processor directly from Encarta, wow. I can type in whatever my report is, and I can just click Paste, and the sound file's in here, and it plays. All right, what else can you show us about the interface and the way you take advantage of the, of the, of the CD-ROM medium? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's move over here to the, to the timeline. Um, mm -hmm. The timeline's a very graphical timeline. We're trying to present information uh, graphically in a way that people can, can relate to the information. This starts with prehistory, and as you st if I drop it anywhere along here, I can drop anywhere, any point okay. in time. And that screen's hot too. I can click on any one of those things and go to it. These oh, are all hot. Like for instance, I can click here on Rock Around the Clock. Huh. I get a short article here. I can click here on Rock Music, jump to the Rock Music article, and I can look at any of these items here, um, give you an idea of the range, or I can copy text out mm, to the report. That's really great. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Let's take a look at what we have from Eden Interactive. And you have a disc called American Visions, and this is sort of a collection of modern art on a CD-ROM? Yes, its subtitle is 20th Century Art from the Roy R. Neuberger Collection, and the collection is housed at the Neuberger Museum of Art at SUNY Purchase. And how many paintings, how many works of art would be on the disc? On the disc, we have included 210 works of art representing 140 different artists. All right, so one of the real challenges in these collections is navigating through the thing and, and how to deal with all that material. How do you solve that problem? Well, the way we did it was, um, let me show you. Um, what you have before you is the uh, ta visual table of contents mm -hmm. or the browse screen as we call it. And in the, f in the top row you have thumbnails of the works of art. 
In the second row, we wanted people to see what the artists look like, mm -hmm. so we have portraits of the artists. The third row is the commentary row, so you have quotes by the artists, reflections of the collector, mm -hmm. and some historians and critics are also included. And the fourth row is the social, political, and artistic context of the time of the art. Okay, so if you have different views, what are they? We provide for three different views to navigate through the content. One of them is chronological. So you click on the clock, the watch, excuse me, and mm -hmm. you get the a year. And you click and drag oh, the neat. year, uh -huh. and you stop at a year. And when so you stop, paintings the works that were of art created during that year. Exactly. And again, your up. thumbnails and the portraits, etc. Exactly. And the second way is alphabetical, and that's rather self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. You go through the whole alphabet. And what was the third one? The third one is by schools and styles of art. Uh -huh. And there are about 26 different in ones included on the title. So let's go. I want to show you a clip of uh, one of the uh, quick time clips that we have of uh -huh. Joseph Albert. It was a rather delightful one. And we're going into the image screen now. So this is, this is my chance to actually talk to the artist, what you always want to do when you look at a painting, right? Exactly, to, he to hear their reflections. Uh -huh. um, what I'm clicking on is the, uh, the links, and the links are the thumbnails that were on the brow screen, but as they directly related, related to, to this, this particular, particular painting. painting. Okay, and so can we go to the let's clip? Let's go to the clip. My four colors invite you to see three. And not only that, they should also see that all these colors are opaque, not transparent, translucent, but you can't see them in another way. That's great. And you can't just do that. Isn't anymore. he delightful? Yeah, no, wonderful. you can't. Um, another feature that I would like to show you, mm -hmm. let's go back to the browse screen, is uh, something that you can't get into a museum, get at the, mu the museum experience, and that is the detail of, the, of a work of art. And I want to show you a painting by uh, David Park, and mm -hmm. we'll go to P. I, I want to tell you also that this title has 24-bit color replications of the work mm -hmm. of art, and that's different from anything else that's on the market okay, right so now. Okay, so you call up the, the green new painting by Park. Exactly. All right, so again, what and you're saying is sometimes we think that, you know, you really want to see great paintings on a CRT, but you're saying, in fact, there's some things we can do with the computer that I couldn't do in the museum. In the museum. One of them you just saw was a, was a clip of the artist, and another one is a detail. So and you sort we'll of zoom in, you mean? On a well, we've, we've chosen the area of the painting to zoom in okay. on. It's a file that's stored, and you use this icon to go to it, and you click on it, and you get the full oh, screen version. Oh, that's great. You really see the detail. You see the, the brush strokes. Work. Yeah, that's fantastic. Right. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Stuart. The Exploratorium in San Francisco is a kind of Please Touch Museum where kids and grown-ups get to play with the latest technology. Right now, they're featuring over 100 new CD-ROM programs, so we thought we'd pay them a visit. There's nothing fragile about the exhibits at the Exploratorium. Hands-on manipulation is designed to encourage understanding of what makes things work. The new multimedia playground includes a CD-ROM library with computer workstations. The multimedia playground is a first attempt for us to show people what's out there and also for us to look at how people use them. And so it's a learning experience for us and the public in general. The CD-ROM library is a trial exhibit. Eventually, a number of computer workstations with the most popular programs will be incorporated as permanent fixtures. In addition, Exploratorium curators are utilizing CD-ROM technology to deliver new programs of their own. CD-ROMs, like any electronic media, but they're quintessential and have the ability to expand your uh, experiences of space and time and information in general. So it just makes, enlarges the uh, field of what you can do. And uh, we have an exhibit that's not on CD-ROM yet that's in prototype that's uh, the powers of 10 in time, where you essentially can manipulate time, and it's, it's in process right now. That's an excellent example of the things that aren't available in the physical world, but are perceivable through the use of media like CD-ROM. The Exploratorium also plans to issue its own interactive CD-ROM discs that recreate experiences at the museum. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. CD-ROMs provide a totally new medium for telling stories, all kinds of stories. Here to show us three very different examples are Roger Devine of the Voyager Company, Nick Roberts of Substance, and Kathleen Burke from Broderbund. All right, let's start with you, Roger. And this, the complete mouse is really a very unusual 
uh, story. Tell us about it. Give us the background. Well, it's a memoir of a Holocaust survivor told by his son, Art Spiegelman, and what was unusual about it is that he told it in the form of a graphic novel, comics, if you will, mm -hmm. where all the Jews are, were drawn as mice and the cats as Nazi, the Nazis as cats, etc. Yeah. Um, what we've done is we've put the entire book on CD-ROM, plus a lot of supplementary material de detailing not only the history behind the story, but also the process involved in making a CD-ROM. Uh, the first section, the introduction, it's called Making Mouse. It concentrates on what it took to make one page of the book, page mm. 145. I'll go into the section uh, where Art talks about having to interview his father to get the material. And what will happen first is that Art will come up and talk to us a little bit about that process. And then we'll get a chance to take a look at some of the okay, interviews. So this will be a quick time video? Yeah, of Art Spiegelman here. Well, Vladek was a very good storyteller and unlike certain survivors, was not reluctant to talk about it, although unlike certain other survivors, he had no specific need to bear witness. All right, you have an actual interview with his father. Yeah, that's on the next page here, and we'll bring this up. This is all material that's going into making up one page, hmm. page 145. So After here. three days, they took us out from prison. Mm -hmm. Everybody who had to go to Auschwitz, and outside was standing a closed bus without windows. And at any point, you can bring up page 145 and take a look at the final result and mm. compare, the, uh, compare the transcripts to what wound up on the page, and et cetera. Uh, we can also take a look at uh, one of the, some of the, the book, as we have it in here, the uh, two volumes of Mouse. You'll see, you saw it there when I had the page view up that you always have a close-up view so mm -hmm. that you can see the detail. But it's also very important to be able to take a look at a full page view so we have both options available to us when we go in. So this and is I'll as if we were reading the book in its right. proper aspect ratio. If we're reading the book in its proper aspect ratio, we can take a look at, at the pages in uh, close-up so we can see the details. We can also click and get a full page view so we see how the panels interact with each other. I can also bring up supplementary or developmental sketches mm -hmm. that went into making up this panel down here in the bottom right-hand corner. As Art was working through the, uh, the, the storytelling, trying to get it right, he saved mm -hmm. literally thousands of pieces of paper that he used as developmental uh, material. I can also take a look at a page from his notebooks as he was trying to flesh out this page the first time. Um, other material that might come up and that we could call up for any given page would include audio from the interviews with Vladek, and we have the full transcripts mm -hmm. available in our expanded book format mm -hmm. on the disc, and uh, audio and video of art explaining the process. Thanks, Stuart. The complete mouse from Voyager. Thanks. Thanks, Stuart. All right, let's take a look at a digizine now called Substance. Right. What's a digizine? It's a digital magazine. It's uh, being published quarterly. Um, out of San Francisco, uh -huh. and it's what it is is a collection of stories and reviews for this first so issue. So it's a CD-ROM magazine. And yeah. This is your interface. And this is our interface. Um, it's a table of interactive content. Here. Yeah, and the content is spinning, mm -hmm. and and you have six or seven different features in this issue, and each feature will comprise about three hours of content. Mm -hmm. So overall, the disc wow. probably has about twelve hours, which you could spend on uh, spend on it. There's an interviews with a. Uh, Nine Inch Nails, which is an alternative rock uh -huh. act. There's a review of ambient house music, which is a new form of music that's really popular in the club scene right now. Mm -hmm. um, an interview with an independent filmmaker named Jim McKay, where you get to view 12 of his PSAs that he produces out of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gen Hex, which is a story on this book called 13th Gen, which came out about half a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, we interviewed the authors of the book, and we also put in our own commentary on the subject matter. This was a book about the, the so-called X generation uh, people the in their so -called 20s. so-called X generation yeah. people in their 20s, what they're doing, how they're spending their money, huh. where they're living. And we sort of like did our own treatment of it. Um, what you have is a remote control, which lets you get into so the story. Into and the that's story. our way into that's the story. Great. And uh, you pick pick the channels, choose the channels. Sometimes you get locked in. I mean, But if you uh, use the inner key to go in, and each, each story interface is different, uh -huh. so you, this won't be the same way that you would approach the Nine Inch Nails interview, for mm -hmm. instance. But it, you've got audio from the authors in here in the secret hidden hotspots. Yeah. And, um, so do you sort of read the digizine, you listen to the digizine, you watch the digizine? Watch it and experience it. And experience so it. So it's, it's uh, being put out by so Sony Electronic Publishing. Uh -huh. and, and it's called Substance, Substance is the name of the digital. Exactly, yeah. All right, great, a magazine so with sound and pictures. There's a comment, they just intruded on us, so. Um, I don't have lofty career goals, but that doesn't mean I'm a slacker. That's great. Okay. All right, thanks a thanks lot, Mark.
Okay, let's take a look at Myst. One of the great things about CD-ROMs is it makes for great games, and Myst, mm -hmm. I guess, is the classic example of really pushing the envelope of CD-ROM technology. Show us Myst. My pleasure. Well, we're going to start here in the library. Library is a key part of Myst. The basic storyline is is sort of literary in feel. You have a father who writes books, and um, when he writes something, it becomes an actual world. Mm -hmm. Well, he goes away, and when he comes back, he finds that somebody's been destroying his books. He suspects one of his two sons. So um, in keeping with the literary theme, he locks them each in a, in a book themselves. Uh. And when you land on Mist Island, it's your turn to figure out what's gone on and who do you believe. So I have sort of a, a mystery, a problem to solve. Exactly. And I have to figure out exactly. what do I do to solve right. it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. So um, what you do is you move forward through the different graphics. There's 2,500 original 3D wow. rendered graphics. It's a beautiful game. The attention to detail is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, there are sound effects. As you get closer to the water, you hear the water lapping against the dock. As, um, as you get, get further up on the hill, you'll, you'll hear the, um, the wind blowing. Mm -hmm. And there is also an original soundtrack. Right now, I'm just sort of moving around, trying to get down to the dock. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a hidden chamber down here that I'd like to take you yeah, to. Okay, yeah. There's a really nice example of the quick time animation use. The thing that makes Myst sort of a different adventure game than what's been done before <laughs> is there are no time limits. Um, there's no way to, to die. I mean, uh -huh. a lot of adventure games, you, you have to be careful what corner you go around because you might get killed, something right. might happen. <laughs> there's no vicious guys right. here going out after you. You exactly. just have to really figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so you're really encouraged to explore. So where are we now? We're going down into this hidden chamber, and when we get down to this pot thing, we're going to click on this little button and see what happens. Catherine, my love, I have to leave quickly. Something terrible has happened. It's hard for me to believe most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine. And this is also a nice sample of the music that's throughout the, the program. All right, Mist from Broderbund. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's our look at CD-ROM software. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, financial software maker Intuit has gobbled up two more tax software programs on the market. Best Software's Master Tax and Tax Partner will be discontinued, and Intuit will service those customers by providing them with the TurboTax Pro Series product line. Intuit acquired Chipsoft's TurboTax line earlier this year. IBM's new Power Parallel mainframes were introduced this week. They run on 192 IBM design chips that mimic the circuit boards used in mainframes. The power parallel computers run faster and don't require the elaborate water cooling systems of traditional mainframes. Computer City will open two new superstores this month, one in Miami and one just outside of Philadelphia. That brings the number of Computer City superstores to 44 worldwide. And Lotus has released a new multimedia screen and sound capture utility called ScreenCam. It lets you put screen application activity, cursor movements, and sound into an integrated file that can be saved and sent to work groups. The idea behind ScreenCam is to be able to explain your thoughts, both visually and verbally, to others as you share and develop documents. ScreenCam is priced at $75. Borland has sent 500 beta copies of the new DBase for Windows to test sites for evaluation. It provides object-oriented tools and is open to the Windows environment. DBase for Windows will ship this summer. And Oldsmobile buyers in California will find onboard computer navigation systems in the Olds 88 starting this spring. The systems include street guides displayed on a color LCD screen and a voice prompt for when to turn. The new car computers will add about $2,000 to the price tag of the new Olds 88. And Crossties is a new product that claims to go beyond the personal information manager category by linking and organizing everything on your desktop. Crossties treats all data as objects and lets you link any type of information and then easily access it. Crossties for Windows sells for about $100. And if you're concerned about which video games are making it into your kids' hands, there's a new book out to help you evaluate 80 of the current titles on the market. The Parent's Guide to Video Games also gives advice on keeping costs down, the positive side of video games, and how to turn electronic games into a family experience. 
And if you're ready for spring, VT Productions has a new software title out to brighten up your life. The Exotic Garden on CD-ROM is a multimedia reference guide to growing flowers, ferns, herbs, edibles, orchids, and more. The Exotic Garden features time-lapse photographic images and information on hundreds of types of plants. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.